Okay, so today we're going to be talking about a certain artist named Salvador Dali. Salvador Dali did a lot of paintings in um, and about surrealism, and surrealism is essentially just what happens in our unconscious mind, so dreams, um, things like that. So that's why a bunch of his artwork looks a little weird and creepy, but so each one of us are going to be getting a clay slab like this. It has been put through the slab roller, so it's going to be a little bit bumpy on the top. So the very first thing we're going to do is to take your finger, get a little bit of water on it, and smooth out your clay. If you need to get some more water, that's okay. You don't want to get too much because then your clay is going to be really, really sopping wet. So after you've smoothed out the front part of the rim to your face of your clock, you're going to have to flip it around and do the same thing to the back. So this makes sure that it doesn't fall apart in the kiln. After I have my clay smoothed out, I am going to take my tool. You guys will probably be using a pencil. And I am just going to draw an oval or a paper clip. I'm just going to draw an oval in my square. If you need to go over your lines a few times just to get them to cut all the way through, that's completely okay. I'm going to peel off the excess and set that aside because we will use it later. Now I am going to take my finger and again smooth out the edges. And this is going to be my clock face. So, the face of a clock, if you don't already know, is going to be the part where the numbers are. The part where the numbers and the hands are found on our clock. So, that's ready to go. So, I am going to set that aside. And now I am going to work on the outside edge of my clock. So, you want to keep rolling your clay until you have this long coil, like so. And this is going to be the outside rim of our clock. Then take your fingers and just kind of flatten it down a little bit so it's less circular and more like a long rectangle. We don't want it to be too thin or else it might break when we try to put it on our clock. And if it's not perfectly even, that's okay. Just get it as close as you can. Then we are going to score our clock. And we need to score our clock because that's the only way that we can get this clay to stick onto the face of our clock um, in the kiln so it doesn't fall apart. So first you're going to get your finger wet again and just run it down the side of the rim of your clock. And then you're going to take your tool, aka your paper clip, and you're going to make scratches. And the only area that we need to scratch are the areas that we plan on connecting to another piece of clay. This is scoring. Once again, scoring. <laughs> so after we've scored the rim of our clock, we're going to set that aside. And we're going to come to the face of our clock. And since we plan on putting the rim on the outside, of the face of our clock, we need to score the outside edges too so that this can stick to this because when we score our clay it goes from being a flat surface to being kind of bumpy up like this. And so when we score both sides that are like this and then we put them together, it's going to lock and it's going to be harder for them to fall apart in the kiln or afterwards. So same thing, you're just going to get a little bit of water on your finger and run your finger along the outside edge of your clock. And then you're going to take your tool or your paper clip and do the exact same thing. So after I've scored the edges of my clock face and the edges of the rim of my clock, I'm going to take a tiny bit of water on my finger and just run it on both sides. Then I am going to take the rim of my clock and start laying it along the edges of the face of my clock, like so. And I have a little bit left over, so I'm just going to take my tool and cut that off and then smooth them together. 
You'll notice that the rim of your clock sits up a little bit higher than the face, and that is totally fine. That's actually kind of what we're going for. So now you're going to press the rim onto the face of your clock. Take your finger and get it a little bit wet, and then run along the area where the rim of your clock meets the face. And we're going to smooth that in a little bit, and this will also help make sure that it doesn't fall apart in the kiln. So you're going to keep smoothing the area where your rim meets the face of your clock. And this is also going to help it stick together too. So it kind of helps if you pull a little bit of the outside edges onto the face of your clock. Like so. So I'm going to set that aside for right now. And I am going to take some of my leftover clay. And I'm going to roll it out again but this time I don't need as much because now we're going to make the hands of our clock. So after I've rolled out my coil, you'll notice that it's a little bit thinner than it was for my rim, which is exactly how we want it. And then same thing, we're going to kind of push it down a little bit so it flattens. So now we're going to make the hands of our clock. And as you know, the minute hand is going to be a little bit longer than the hour hand. So you can... Just make a cut, and this is going to be the minute hand of my clock. And honestly, I think that might even still be too big, so I'm just going to cut it down a little bit more. And before you start scoring it, place it on your clock and see if you like it. Obviously, the minute and second, or the minute and hour hands come out of the middle of our clock. So we want to set it in the middle and make sure that it doesn't go too far over the edge of our clock. So this is about perfect for my minute hand. So since I like the size of it, I'm going to get my finger wet and run it along the back edge. And then I am going to take my tool and score it again. And then I'm going to do the same thing where I want to put my minute hand on my clock. And since the minute hand goes all the way around and it, at any given time it could be at any given position on our clock, you can kind of decide where you want it. So I'm going to put mine almost at about five till. And I'm just going to score the area where I want my minute hand to go. And if you score too much, that's completely fine because you can smooth it out later. And then I'm going to take my minute hand and press them to, and then smooth out the edges, just like I did with the rim of my clock. So after I've made my minute hand and it's attached to my clock, I am going to make my hour hand. And like I said, the hour hand is obviously going to be a little bit smaller, so that's about the size I want it. So now I am going to make one end kind of pointy. And then same thing. You're going to score the end, the back side of your hour hand, and then you are going to score wherever you want it to go on the clock. And just like the minute hand, it can go anywhere. So all of your extra clay, you're going to ball up and set it to the side because we can reuse that for a project later. But now I've got my clock and it's ready to um, be shaped. And since Salvador Dali's clocks are kind of droopy and falling down all over the place, they're not perfectly straight, we're going to try to get the same effect with our clock. So I'm going to crumple up a couple of pieces of newspaper. And before I put my clock on those, I am actually going to flip it around and with my pencil, actually, I'm going to smooth out the back side of my clock. I kind of forgot to do that. So after I have everything attached to my clock and before I start to mold it, I am going to take my tool and write my name so that we don't get this confused with anyone else's. Okay, so I'm going to bring my clock that has my name on the back and my wadded up paper and all around um, sink number three and two, there are going to be some trays. Find an empty spot on the tray, put your paper down and drape your clock over it. And you might need to press down a little bit on your clock to actually get it to start forming. 
like that. So once your clock is done, you may wash your hands, take off your apron, and clean up.